Hi guys, welcome to another exciting video on Java. We are going to uh, revise a few topics from the first unit guys and uh, they are very very important. The topics are going to be method overriding, method binding and exceptions. Very important for your exams as well as interviews. I will see you on the other side guys. Java as a language is actually pretty easy, uh, was, you know, compared to other languages. Uh, you know, learning software development in general is a fairly daunting task. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's, that's sort of around and above the language. Uh, Java is actually particularly easy and straightforward to teach as a first programming language. Okay, that was a great James Gosling, guys. He is the inventor of Java, right? It was initially called as Green Talk because he was working in a team called Green Team under the uh, uh, company called as Sun Microsystems. Later, it was changed to another name called as Oak. Apparently, there was a tree outside the office called as Oak and they named it as Oak. But because of some proprietary issues, they had to change the name and the name was changed to Java that is still being used even today, right? So we're going to get to the topic, today's topic, guys. So I'll see you on the other side. All right. So we're going to talk about something called as initial method overriding, guys. So remember, whenever you talk about method overriding in Java, you have a lot of classes. Within each class, you have methods and some variables that are defined within the classes. So remember, Whenever you talk about a method, a method cannot be defined outside a class in Java. It has to be defined in a, in a particular class. So remember, whenever you want to access any method in Java, the object for that particular class has to be allocated some space and that using that object or it is also called as instance of that class can be used to access a particular method. So that is how methods are accessed in Java. So remember, normally we talk about uh, methods with different names, but when we talk about method overriding, we are talking about two methods with the same name. Now, you have, you have to talk about two classes. Always remember, whenever you talk about method overriding, we are talking about two separate classes. One is called as a parent class, another is called as a child class. A parent class will have a method and a child class will have a method. Both the names are same. Okay, and the parameters which are used for both the methods will also be same. The name and the parameters all everything will be same for both the class methods, right? So this is the very important point whenever we talk about method overriding. Method overriding always has two methods with the same name or it also provides something called as runtime polymorphism in Java which we will discuss a little later in the next coming videos. Right? So, but remember always whenever you talk about method overriding, you should have a is a relationship. Is a relationship is nothing but a parent, okay, and a child class is having a is a relationship. So, if you have such kind of relationship and both the classes have the same name with the same parameters, then that concept is called as method override, overriding. So, please look at the example on the screen, guys. You can see there are two classes called as vehicle and bike to. Vehicle class is printing a, uh, printing something called as vehicle is running and bike 2 has a function called run which is printing, printing bike is running safely. Now both the functions if you notice are the same name run right the vehicle and bike 2 both classes have the same function names called run without any parameters right. So whenever you want to call a particular function you can see in the main within my main function I have created an object for the class called as bike2 which is the child class of vehicle class okay so for bike2 initially i have created an object called obj okay using that object okay i am going to access the function which is there in my child class itself so remember there i have written obj.run now that obj.run is not referring to the parent class vehicle run it is referring to the child class run function Okay, because we say that the run function which has been defined in my bike to child class is overriding the function run in the vehicle parent class. Okay, so remember whenever in this particular program when you run this program, this obj.run will call the run function in your bike to child class and it will print bike is running safely. So we will move on to the next topic something called as method binding guys.
Okay, so these are some of the rules whenever you talk about method overriding, which I just now went over, guys. The first thing is the methods in both the classes should be same. The uh, name, name of the method should be same. The second thing is the parameters that are defined for each method should be same in both the classes. Okay, same names, same parameters, and there should be a is a relationship between the two classes, right? So basically, you have a parent class and a child class. Right, so that is these are the three important points you should know about method overriding. All right, so next we're going to talk about something called as method binding. Now, what is method binding? Method binding is nothing but whenever you call a function using an object, normally you will write an object name dot the method name. So, whenever you are trying to call the method using the object, right, remember that that uh, method call which, which you are making will have or the address of the function body that address will be binded to your function call. So this is called as method binding. So whatever method you are calling, whatever function call you are making, that function call will be binded with the address of the function body which you are trying to call. So that is the main concept of what method binding means. You are basically binding the address of the function body and the call that is, that is being made to that particular function. They are binded together which is called as method binding. There are mainly two types here. One is called as static binding, another is called as dynamic binding. Static binding what it basically means is the binding of that particular address of the function body and the function call will be made at the compile time itself or it is also called as early binding guys static binding or early binding you can use both the names the binding which occurs at the compile time is called as static binding or early binding that means before you start executing the program the binding of the address occurs with that function call right remember the functions can be defined as or declared as static private or final so these function uh, functions will not behave differently once you start running. So that is the reason you can do the binding for the functions which are defined as static, private or final at the compile time itself, right? So static binding will work for these kind of functions. Another type of functions we have something called as dynamic binding. So now what is dynamic binding? Now dynamic binding is very similar to static binding. The only difference here is the binding of the address of the function body will be binded to the function call at the runtime or at the execution time of the program, not at the compile time. So that is the main difference between your static binding and dynamic binding. Now dynamic binding is also called as a late binding. Static binding is also called as early binding. This is a very, very important concept for your exams as well as interviews. So make sure you have understood this concept. We will move on to the next topic called as exceptions guys. All right, so what do you mean by exceptions? So exceptions basically mean whenever you are trying to execute your Java program, suddenly because of some abnormal condition in your program, the program is terminated abnormally, okay? That is nothing but called as exceptions. These kind of exceptions normally occur at the runtime, okay? Basically what it means is it is a problem that arises during the execution of the program or the normal pro flow of the program is disrupted and the program or application terminates abnormally. Mainly there are two categories. Now remember it comes under the language package java.lang package and there is a uh, class called object under which we have a class called throwable under which we have two main categories exceptions and errors. Under exceptions you can have two types of exceptions you can have runtime exceptions and compile time exceptions right so whenever you are trying to execute the program while the execution of the program is underway there might be some exceptions that occur for example there is an exception called as array index out of bounds so for example you have defined an array size of 100 right you can access the values in the array from the index value 0 to 99 if you try to access an index value 101 then it will Pro, it, it will basically throw an exception called as array index out of bound. That means you are trying to access an index which is not being defined at all or it is not there in the memory at all, right? So such kind of exception is called as a runtime, ex uh, runtime exception. Another type of example is file not found exception. So whenever you talk about file concept in Java, you try to open a file, for example, when you are trying to open the file and the file is not present or the path that is you have given to that file is wrong, in that case, file not found exception will occur. 
this is another example of runtime exception so exception basically means it is a exception or abnormal uh, stop to a program termination of a program during the execution right so the details they there are uh, in detail it is going to be discussed in your third unit guys we have already discussed it in third unit so we will move on to the uh, one more topic called as features of java guys all right so these are some of the important buzzwords or features of java guys okay java is very very simple easy to understand easy to learn guys as already james gosling in your, in his video introduction he has introduced that it can be taught as the first programming language c is not required is what indirectly he says right yes java is very easy to learn right but the thing is object oriented it it starts with a feature called as object oriented you know feature which is not there in your c right so which is very very powerful we will discuss about that a little later so obviously java is very very simple easy to understand and easy to learn right next it is very very secured guys how is it secured i will tell you a few points whenever you talk about pointers you had in c and c++ the dangerous thing about pointers is that whenever you try to access a location in your ram which is maybe for example there is a small location in your ram where your system operating system files are stored okay for the execution of your operating system and by mistake you access using a pointer to that location which is there where it is containing your system uh, program which is running if you are trying to access that location and you write some data there then your operating system might get corrupted and abruptly your operating system will stop running so in that case it is a very very dangerous thing so normally this pointer concept is very dangerous which has been removed in java so it is obviously much more secured next we have jvm java virtual machine remember jvm is a java virtual machine which is made for each type of operating system it converts something called as a byte code into a machine dependent code so jvm can be used for checking the viruses also for your java programs next you have portability that means if you write once you can run it on any 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 operating system guys anywhere you can run it that is the beauty of java it is portable okay next it is object oriented everything is object oriented all the programs are basically written in terms of real world objects right so you can make class names called as maybe uh, you know school class school in that school you can have basically departments as methods right so you can have you can write programs which are very close to the real world objects that we normally interact with daily right so it is object oriented which is very powerful and important nowadays next we have it is robust why it is robust obviously because it is very reliable especially memory management is very very reliable guys because remember whenever you want to access any methods in a particular class you have to create the object for that class using the object i can access the method but if what if you have created an object in a class and you are not using that object for accessing any method in that case that space is actually you know useless you are using you are allocating the space but you are not using it for anything in that case smartly your java will basically take care of that your java runtime environment will deallocate the extra memory space which is allocated for that particular object which is not used so memory management is very very good guys right next remember the exceptions all the exceptions will be held, handled in java remember those days in c when you had written those loops finite uh, infinite loop used to go to right in such cases are taken care in java you will not have programs where the loop goes into an infinite loop where you had to stop the program and restart the program again so that is not required in your java because all those kind of exceptions will be handled automatically okay or it will tell you to handle them next we have something called as multi threaded now it is very it is very important concept because all the applications nowadays are using this concept called as multi threading concepts remember the main advantage of this is if you have a processor which supports multi threading a multi core multi threaded processor it will take the advantage of that particular concept of your processor to speed up the application pro execution of your application parallelly you can run multiple threads or multiple methods in your program parallelly on the processor so the execution will increase the ex execution of your program will 
increase okay and the performance also automatically increases guys next it is architecture neutral that means if you talk about a 32 bit architecture or a 64 64 bit architecture this java program will behave the same that means if in in c for example a uh, uh, integer is provide is provided how many bytes normally it is provided four bytes for a 32 bit system and two bytes for a 64 uh, for a 16 bit system that is not the same in java for all 32 bit or 64 bit systems four bytes is allocated for integer data type so basically it behaves the same it is architecture neutral right next we have interpretation now one very important one very important thing about this particular uh, interpreted uh, concept is that your java is not only compiled but it is also interpreted it is both compiled as well as interpreted now what do you mean by compilation basically you have learned in your c program and c++ that you have a c compiler or a c++ compiler which will convert your high level language into a low level language or a machine dependent code which is your binary code now in java it is not the same your java compiler will convert your high level language into a byte code okay and that byte code is then again converted to something called as machine dependent code by you by jvm right so remember this jvm will take your byte code which is converted by java compiler and convert it into a machine dependent java code or machine dependent binary code i'm sorry so in this case remember your java is not only compiled but it is also interpreted you compile as well as interpret the java high level language is compiled to a byte code and the byte code is uh, initially it is the functions are interpreted and then as and when required the functions which are interpreted will be compiled into machine dependent code both it is compiled as well as interpreted these questions can be asked in your interviews guys very important next it is very high performing because remember uh, you have something called as just in time compiler all your functions in java are not compiled from high level language to a low level language directly you it what it will do is your jvm will pick the methods which are important for execution or the methods which are executing again and again those kind of methods only will be compiled into machine dependent code the other functions which are there in your program will not be compiled it will be interpreted initially so this is a very important concept in java so remember this guys very very important it is interpreted or it is basically uh, you have something called as just in time compiler this just in time compiler will make sure that only the functions which are called more number of times will be compiled into machine dependent code otherwise it will only be interpreted hence your java code is having high performance or the execution is much faster next you can create a distributed applications in java guys you can see there in the slide you can create tcp ip applications rmi applications right all these kind of distributed applications can be created using your java language which is very very powerful rmi is nothing but your remote method invocation and tcp ip is your transfer control protocol and ip applications can directly be written using java guys which is very powerful next we have finally we have something called as dynamic it is uh, it basically records all your runtime information so java provides all that it will log all the information so it's a very very important thing about java also so please thank you for watching this video we will continue with more topics in the next video guys such as encapsulation inheritance polymorphism such kind of topics will continue in the next uh, video guys i hope you like the video please share the video to as many people as you can please like the video and subscribe to the channel i will come back with a new video thanks for watching and see you soon in another video guys bye